English is really fun, said no one ever. I mean, no, of course it's fun, but what makes it even more fun is the fact that we have silent letters. Just the concept alone, we put letters in there that we don't want to pronounce. Why? Well, because it's fun. But all jokes aside, in this video, we're gonna talk about silent letters and I'm gonna give you some instances of every single letter in the alphabet and when it could be silent, starting with A. Everything's in English. All you need to know. All right, how did you learn to speak English? The A is silent basically in A-L-L-Y endings, like basically. It's not basically, right? It's basically. Basically. Logically, not logically. I mean, logically. Logically, guys. Romantically, not romantically. Romantically. I think you get the point. Moving on. Silent B. Well, the B is silent in words like Climb, right? It's not climb, but you already know that. Now climb the ladder. Comb, although it's very tempting to say comb. One comb. Oh, you liked your food so much, you ate it all, you didn't leave any crumbs, right? Not crumbs, although it sounds really fun to say crumbs, but no, the B is silent. Crumbs. Bread crumbs. Or a word that is not fun at all, debt. It's not debt, right? It's debt. Insane debt. Or doubt. It's not doubt. The B is silent, so doubt. No doubt. No doubt. As well as numb. Basically numb. Subtle. Subtle. And thumb. Thumb. The thumb. Silent C. For example, acquire. We don't really need it, because the Q does all the job here. Acquire. You will never. Acquire. Or muscle. We don't need that C there at all. Muscle. They could have added a second S or something. Muscle would be the same, but no. Some jobs take muscles. Or scissors. Now that is definitely a weird one to think about. Scissors. They could have just left it out. I don't know why. I mean, it's probably, it probably comes from uh, some other language or something and it was spelled in a similar fashion and they just kept it like that. I don't really know, but in English, we don't pronounce the C in scissors. It's not skizzers, it's just scissors. Scissors? Silent D, you already know it's Wednesday, even though uh, it looks like Wednesday, but it's Wednesday. Just like when you say when, when, when do you want me to come see you, right? When? Wednesday, that's literally what it is. Wednesday? Mm. What, what Wednesday? Or sandwich. It's very rare that you'll hear someone say sandwich. Really hitting that D, but you know what I mean? Sandwich. I know a lot of people that say sandwich as if it had two M's in it, sandwich. It, it's definitely way easier like that. Dave, sandwich? Ah. Or handsome. It's not handsome, right? We, we don't really make an effort to make that letter stand out. We don't say handsome, right? It's just handsome. Handsome. Or edge, edge. I guess it makes sense, the combo of D and uh, G, but still. It's so deceiving, because when you say it a couple of times, edge, edge, it, it, it almost seems like the D is an essential part of the word. But if you think about it, it's just a J sound, right? Edge. On edge. And the same thing applies to bridge. Bridge. Brooklyn Bridge. Now this one is a little controversial because no, we don't pronounce it at all, but it does change the vowel before. So for example, take hate, right? Hate. We say hate, but if you remove the E, it's gonna be hat, right? Hat that you wear. So we basically go from hate with an A sound, a diphthong A, to A, hat. Just a straight up, just one sound. Very interesting. Hate. Name. So we don't necessarily pronounce the E, but it does do something to the vowel before. Name. Like. Without the E at the end, it would have been lick. Like. Or breathe. That changes too. Because if you take the E out, it's just going to be breath. Breathe. 
Silent F. Can't think of any right now. Silent G. For example, sign. That's a great one. Sign. It's a sign. Or champagne. Champagne. Champagne? Or gnat. Mm. That woman has the attention span of a gnat. Or how about high? Oh yeah, high hopes, high hopes. Or light. Light. Now silent letters are pretty simple. It's a simple concept. You see those letters, but you don't pronounce them. But how do you pronounce the letters and sounds that are supposed to be there? You, you want to make sure you do it correctly. And I can definitely help you with that. Join my brand new pronunciation course and participate in the challenge to improve your pronunciation and get a chance to win prizes. Like what? Yes, you heard it. It's all true. So if you're ready to put your insecurities and bad pronunciation behind you forever, you know where to go. Link is in the description. The silent H. The first one is honest. Mm, we don't say the H there. Honest. Honest. Or ghost. Ghost! How about hour? You have two hours to finish the project. Hour. Doesn't really do much there either. One hour. We've done one hour. Or what? People used to reverse them and say what. But don't do that now because you're just going to be a weirdo. What? Silent I, since we're going with the alphabet, uh, silent I. Business? It's not busyness, right? It's business. So I guess that counts. Business. Silent J. Can't think of any right now. But silent K is easy. For example, knife. Knife. My knife. No. Like, I know. You don't have to tell me because I know. <sighs> I know. Or you... Do what? Knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Or you could tie a knot. Name a knot, any knot, go ahead. Or if it's not a button, but it's the one that you have to dial, it's a knob, like a doorknob or... Let me show you what a knob looks like, okay? You see this one right here? This is a knob. Silent L. Well, first of all, it's all of the would. You would. Should. You should and could you could also you can do half right it's not half it's half half of course salmon but that's been played out so let's just move on smoke salmon how about talk can we have a talk let's talk or the yellow little part of an egg yolk yolk silent m how about this one? Mnemonic. Let me give you this word. Uh, so mnemonic is, it could be an adjective, it could be a noun. What I wanna give you today is the noun version of it. So uh, mnemonic is a system or a way that you can memorize a sequence of something or just memorize something in general, an easier way. I have an amazing mnemonic device. Silent N. Autumn, but we just say fall. Summer, autumn, winter. Or column, or condemn. They condemn themselves. Or damn. Damn. Silent O. The first thing that comes to mind is kernel. It's not necessarily silent per se. We just modify it. It's just different. It's still kind of there. It's just different, but we're just gonna stick with that kernel as a military title. Colonel? Silent P, pneumonia, that's a silent P. Mr. Vaughn has pneumonia. Or psychology, that's a silent P right there, psychology. Abnormal psychology. Or receipt, we don't say that P, I've heard it so many times. We don't say that, receipt, the P is silent. Cash, no receipt. Silent Q, uh, no idea, moving on. Silent R, well, this one is no better. Uh, in American English, I can't think of any. In British, of course, I mean, there are some, but in American, I just don't know. Silent S, okay, okay, you go to the store and you need to find something, so you go to that aisle. 
aisle seven. Or you want to go on vacation, so you go on an island. Evacuate the island. Or debris. Only drifting debris. Silent T. The first one is a little confusing. Even I thought at the very beginning of my journey, but I still thought that it was asthma, right? With a TH, but it's just asthma with a Z sound. And the T is not even there. Shannon has asthma. Asthma, yeah. Or, I mean, that's an easy one, but ballet. The ballet, the symphony. Or castle. The castle. Listen. The T is silent there. Listen. Listen. Silent you, colleague. Good day, colleague. Or how about guess? The word guess. That's a good one. Guess what? Or guard. Guard! Or guide. It will guide you. Or guilt. The guilt. Or tongue. Tongue. Silent V. Hmm. Moving on. Silent W. Uh, well, first of all, answer. Answer. Sword. Your sword. Two. Also. Two. Or, uh, whole. The whole time? Wrist. Wrist! Or right. Right, right, uh, right, a couple words. Silent X. And honestly, the only word I can think of right now is foe. You probably see it on the screen right now and it's very confusing. Well, it's not English, at least that's what I think. Uh, faux means fake, like uh, fake leather or fake fur. It, it, it would be faux. Faux fur is a very popular way to use that. They're all faux fur. Silent Y, no. Silent Z, how about rendezvous? Hot rendezvous? The first thing is stressed syllables and words. So right off the bat, you know that if a word has two or more syllables, one of them is gonna be more stressed than the others. Of course, there's things like, you know, main stress and secondary stress, it's uh, whatever, whatever. But listen to this. Cause I'm an American. Did you hear how he said the word American? Cause I'm an American. The stress is on the second syllable. American, American. So practice thinking about that. You don't wanna say American, you don't wanna say American. American, American, American. Cause I'm an American. Now the same rule applies to sentences. You have a sentence and there is always a word that is the most stressed. Like it receives the most emphasis because it's the main one. That's the main word you use to deliver your message. Listen to this. Just go for it, Chandler. Yeah, you yeah. should, you should. Really. Just go for it, just go, go. The stress is on the word go. So make sure you hit your main word harder. Just go for it, Chandler. Yeah, you yeah. should, you should. Really. The next thing is enunciation. So this one is very tricky. Uh, while some people think that American accent is, is kind of, you know, people are lazy with it and they don't pronounce everything. There is some truth to that. And it is a native speaker skill that you should perhaps work on as well. But the only way to work on that is to learn how to pronounce or over pronounce everything. Every detail matters. Don't be lazy, Tony, enunciate. So the thing that I talk about, and please let me switch to that, you know, clearer way to speak. The thing that I always talk about is when you talk, make sure it, it feels like you, you taste every single sound when you talk. The time for you to drop everything will come shortly, I promise you. Be patient, and for now, make sure you taste every single sound when you speak. For example, bottle, bottle. Yes, we do use that flap T to make it a little more, you know, to, to make it a little easier, I guess. You know, you could say bottle, but I mean, we, we wouldn't say it like that anyway. But anyway, even with the flap T, bottle, I'm hitting it pretty hard. I'm making sure it's very clear. Bottle, bottle, bottle. Try it. It's not like I'm saying bowl or, or something like that. Bottle, very clear. Oh, where's my bottle? My bottle. Oh. Now let's look at a more detailed difference between the, the American and the British English. Uh, it's called rhoticism. It's a linguistic 
term that basically describes, you know, the absence or presence of R's. The standard American pronunciation, we say all the R's. River, the R is present at the beginning and at the end. And British is not like that. You know, some of the R's are left out. In American, we would say card. Pick a card, any card. And in British, it would be cod. Pick a cod. The next one is TH sounds. That one is tricky. Tricky because not a lot of languages have that sound. So the thing is, take your tongue, put it between your teeth, just like this. Blow out air. Congratulations. You just mastered the voiceless TH. Now for the voiced one, you just add some sound to it, some, some voice, some vocal vibrations. Congratulations, you've mastered them both. So some of the words for the voiceless one would be think, health, and the voiced one would be this or mother. Think boy, think of your mother. Take it slow and focus on these sounds. Master them. It's very important. They need to become your second nature. Otherwise, you'll sound a bit, a bit weird. The next one is dropping words. It's very common in American English that we drop some words if we don't feel like we need them at the moment. And it's definitely a little less common in, in British. So let's say, I'm asking, are you going to the store today? And you can say, yeah, what you need. Did you notice how you're not saying what do you need? You just say what you need. Very simple, I can still understand. And it's very common that we drop the auxiliary verbs sometimes, even in questions. Are you hungry? You hungry? Still the same, just simple and shorter. That's what we do in informal spoken English. Do not do that in writing. I mean, I'm talking about formal writing, of course. Do not avo avoid that. What? Need a hand? And the last thing is speaking manner. So American English is definitely way more relaxed than many other languages and many other types of English actually as well. So just chill. You don't need to do any complicated oral gymnastics or nothing like that. Just, just relax. Just relax. Know your words. Know your grammar. Just say them. And don't forget to taste every single sound. Everything in the American version of English is kind of directed at saying stuff in the easiest way possible. Everything, the creation of the language. I swear to God, I, I swear to God, the language was created to just simply be lazy and, 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 do, and not waste any energy while you talk. So do not be tense, just relax, and the sounds will flow very well, I promise you. Now, the next thing is pitch. And what pitch is, pitch is how low or high your voice is. So American English generally is a little higher than let's say Russian would be. I mean, it's not like a rule or anything like that. It's, it's just a general observation. I speak pretty low when I speak American English or when I, oh my God, when I speak English, I speak pretty low, uh, just like I do when I speak Russian, but there are certain moments in English where I go way higher than I would in Russian, 100%. So keep in mind that there is this range and it's, it's huge. You could go from down here to up here in one sentence for no reason at all. Well, I mean, there is a reason, of course, if you're very emotional and you're expressing excitement. Uh, what did you do? You know what I mean? So in the same kind of sentence, you could be like, wait, what did you do? Easy, easy. So keep that in mind and don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and explore different pitches and tones and, and different levels of your voice. And of course, speak up and don't be shy. The worst English is the English that is never spoken. So don't be afraid. And of course, don't forget to always be exposed to the language. Watch stuff, watch TV, watch movies, watch Netflix, listen to audiobooks and podcasts and watch YouTube videos and try to speak to someone 
speak English to someone every chance you get. The American English has naturally evolved. The way that happens, or the way it happened, was, uh, you know, people were just too lazy to say certain things. And I wish I was joking. <laughs> I wish I was joking. There is no deeper reason or deeper meaning to it. It's just over time, native speakers modified certain sounds in order for them to require less effort, consume less energy, time, and, uh, you know, just make it easier to say stuff. And flap T is one of those things. So before we start practicing it, let's figure out how it works. What is a flap T and when, when do we use it? You wanna use the flap T when your T is between two vowels, whether it's in the same word or between two different words. You also wanna use the flap T when your T is between a vowel and a dark L, like uh, little. Little? or bottle. A bottle. The bottle. And you wanna use the flap T when it's before or after an R controlled vowel. Er, turtle, turtle. So when you make this sound, when it comes to the sound, you can think of it in two different ways. Uh, the first one is, it's, it's like a soft, a ve very, very soft D, duh, duh, duh. I don't want you to hit it hard and say D, D, no. It's not about that. It is not about that. D, 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 okay? Or if your native language has this special sound, you can use this, you can use this superpower to create the flap T. So what you're gonna do is, okay, think about this your tongue, the tip of your tongue is touching the roof of your mouth multiple times. You see what's going on? What I want you to do is to touch it once. You did it, you just did it. It doesn't matter which way you want to think about the sound, uh, soft D or this, either way is fine. So let's practice. We're gonna do three rounds. Repeat after me. You can literally come back to this video every single day to do it with me. Let's go. Round one, metal. Metal. Okay. Metal. Metal shop. The next one is city. City? City. City. The city. I live in the city. Okay. This next one is pretty. 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 The next one is little. Little, little. Little, little. The next one is later. 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 Do it slowly, okay? Later. Later. The next one is butter. 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 And the last one is waiting. 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 He is waiting. And he is waiting for you. Great job. Okay, round two. It's pretty short, but uh, it's gonna be between two words, okay? And the first one is get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. The next one is Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Hey, you, you. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up! Hey, shut up! And the last one for round two is about us. About us. About us. About us. About us. Have you heard anything about us? You must have heard about us. Okay, very close. Round three. Now, we're gonna practice with sentences. So get ready. They love spending time with their little daughter. Let's do it slowly. They love spending time with their little daughter. Little daughter. The next one is, what about Arnold? Hey, what about Arnold? What about? What about Arnold? What about Arnold? What about? Do you remember the show, Hey Arnold? 
don't know why I thought of it. It was it was cool. What are you guys doing? Hey Arnold. The next one is something you all should say every morning, okay? Huh. English is pretty easy. Pretty easy work. English is pretty easy. Hmm. Pretty easy. Seems pretty easy. The next one is he's putting it on your computer. I'm putting it on. Do you see how this entire sentence is connected and it sounds like one word? He's putting it on your computer. No pauses at all. Okay, let's practice slowly. He's putting it on your computer. I'm not putting it on. Great. And the last one is not that complicated, but it's something you should remember. The more you practice, the better. You better practice. The more you practice, the better. 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 You can do better. And you will do better. I know it. The first word is, we have what? January, right? We have February, okay? We have March, right? And what's after? April. So the first sound of April is A. Like you saw me outside and you said A, right? April, it's a diphthong, it's a double, it's a, it's a sliding, gliding sound. April. It's not April, it's not April, it's April. 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 But then we got what? May, June, July, and then what? What was that? Come again? August. August. The first sound is a rounded ah sound. You take your ah ah and then you round your lips. Ah 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 ah. August. August. It's not August. It's not August. Well, not in American anyway. August. August 24th. Number three. This one on the screen right now. I know we say north and we say south with ow, right? That That's the sound. It's a diphthong again. Ow, ow south but when we're dealing with this word we don't use the ow sound we just say southern it's not southern it's southern southern number four purchase purchase i understand it's uh, there is per and there's chase so per chase but no that's not what it is it's purchase per chase purchase and the verb and the noun sound exactly the same. I need to purchase this book, and this book was a great purchase. Same thing. If you purchase one. Number five, technique, okay? Technique, both are k sounds. It's not tech or tech, it's tech. We could also use that as a standalone word. Tech, oh, I'm obsessed with the new tech, which is short for technology. Technique. Technique. Wow, this uh, fighter has a very good technique. Interesting technique. When it comes to working on your pronunciation, you know, uh, it's very important to train your ear to pick up all the nuances of certain sounds and words and things and combinations. But you can't 100% rely on that because, I mean, your ear could be deceiving. The way you hear it could be very different from the reality of it. So, with that being said, there is something that you can 100% rely on, and that's where you place your tongue, what shape your lips are in, uh, what your teeth are doing, and uh, stuff like that. And if you're ready for this technical, detailed knowledge of how to improve your pronunciation, well, you've come to the right place. I'm gonna teach you everything I know and everything you need to know in my incredibly popular, if I do say so myself, pronunciation course. Every day we're gonna break down all of those weird, wacky sounds and you will know. You will know what to do. And if you know that your tongue is touching your upper teeth, it's hard to mess that up. You have to work really hard to do it the wrong way. So if you're ready to change your sound and change your life, I'm gonna put the link in the description. Hopefully I see you there. Number six, specify. Specify. I've heard so many different versions of that over the years, you have no idea. Specify, and I, I can't even remember all of them, but it's specify. Specify. Fi at the end, okay? Just like Spotify or Shopify. <laughs> specify. That's just how it is, but repeat after me. 
specify. Get inside and shut the door. But you didn't specify. Number seven, this word, very. It sounds exactly like very with an E. I like it very much or people's opinions vary. This is the, the same. Don't overthink it. It sounds exactly the same. Quality can vary. And then from vary, we have variable. Always account for variable change. And we have variety, variety, variety. Number eight, analysis. Analysis, just first of all, the first sound, analysis. It's not analysis, analysis, it's nothing like that. We call that the schwa, that's the sound, the name of the sound, schwa. It's a very lazy sound, uh, you just woke up, it's 4 a.m., someone woke you up and you're like, uh, that's the sound. Analysis. Kowalski, analysis. And then at the end of it, it's the short I sound, sis, analysis, when it's singular and when it's plural, you say, you use the long I sound and you say analyses. Number nine, necessarily, necessarily. This word is harder to spell without autocorrect than to you know, say it, <laughs> but uh, necessarily. So when you encounter a very difficult, complicated word, maybe it's long, just break it down into parts. Necessarily, 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 necessarily. Necessarily, necessarily. It's it's uh, all of those are s's. Necessarily, right? It's not necessarily or nothing like that. It's necessarily. Not necessarily. And number ten is a very interesting one. Pretty much the way it's spelled is maintain. Both of those sounds are diphthongs. A a main tain, maintain, maintain, main tain, maintain. This lifestyle is very hard to maintain. You maintain plausible deniability. Great job, everyone. And the first one is ability. I'll be honest, this one is not a native speaker one necessarily, but still, ability. A lot of people, because they see the word able, they wanna say ability, but that is not the case. Ability, it's schwa. The schwa sound is the first sound of the word. Ability. Native ability. Word number two, calm. It's a very, very seamless dark L. Don't make it super obvious. Calm, don't make it light, calm, don't spend a lot of time on it. It's very brief, you know, you're not staying there. You're just kind of hopping over it a little bit. Calm, it's a very, very seamless dark L. Calm. Number three, that's interesting, change change the main vowel sound is a diphthong a change not change or change you know what i mean change sound a change, change. this one is strange because it obviously it is not an english word but we use it in english chic chic yes the first sound confuses you the vowel confuses you it is not at all how it's written well welcome to english where things are not what they seem. Chic. Number five, debt. The B is silent. Don't say B, it's not debt. Sounds like dipped. You dipped something into something, but no. Debt, no B. Credit card debt, credit card debt. Number six, exercise. This is a bad habit for native speakers. People put the word egg in it, exercise. I never understood that. It's just exercise, ex exercise, exercise. That's it. I hope you did yours today. Exercise. Number seven, height. That's a difficult word for English learners because it clearly says E-I. So why can't it be hate? Well, hate already exists. It is spelled differently, so it's height. I know the word weight is spelled in a similar fashion, but it's just height. Like average height. Number eight. Lettuce. I know there's a U in there. I, I get it. Trust me, I understand. It's still lettuce. Lettuce. It's not lettuce. It's not lettuce. Mm -mm. It's just lettuce. Just lettuce. That's it. Carrots and lettuce. Number nine. Onion. It's an onion. I know there is an O there, but it's not an onion. No, it's just onion. English doesn't make sense at all. 
booming onion. <laughs> Number 10, photograph. Photograph. It is the photo itself. Not like in many languages where you use this word to describe someone who takes photos. No, we call that a photographer. Photographer has a slightly different pronunciation than photograph. Photograph. Photograph! I need a photograph! Number 11, sandwich. Sandwich. It's a very weird occurrence. It's not that we don't pronounce the D, it's it's just it's so soft that it's barely audible. I'm not skipping over it though. I'm not saying sandwich. I'm saying sandwich. Like I'm doing it, but you can hear the difference though. You just can't hear the D. Sandwich. Sandwich. Or you could just, you know, resort to how native speakers say that. Sandwich with an M. Sandwich. <laughs> Sandwich after sandwich. Number 12, pear. I know, pear, the fruit, sounds like pear, like two people. Also, the combination of the letters, E-A, you know, could be a different sound, which it should be, but it's not. I understand, trust me. Pear. Number 13, vinegar. It's not vine, I know it's related to that word, but it's not an I sound. It's just a short E sound or short i sound whatever you want to call it and also the first sound is is a v sound v, 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 v. upper teeth touch a lower lip v. it's not a w w don't don't get it confused like vinegar number 14 purchase purchase i know a part of this word is the word chase however just ignore that it's not purchase it's purchase and that's it i made a purchase and number 15 Maple. Yeah, the word map is right in front of it, but it's not maple. It would make more sense if it was maple syrup, but it's maple. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Let's get right into it, and we're gonna start things off with this word right here. Restaurant, okay? First of all, if you're struggling with your R's, you wanna make sure there is no contact happening in your mouth. If you touch something on R, it's over. It's over. So if you need a little help with that, round your lips a little bit. That will help you make sure the tip of your tongue is not touching anything, and that is essentially our goal here. Let's start with uh, rest. Rest. Restaurant, okay? So the T kind of turns into a very soft CH just because of a really nice transition that it creates to go into the next part, uh, to the rest of the word. Restaurant. Restaurant. Repeat after me. Restaurant. Now, uh, when it comes to the final T, you can either say it or aspirate it. Restaurant. Or you can just uh, leave it be and make it a stop T. Restaurant, like we do anyway. Restaurant. Restaurant. This next one uh, made this uh, video only because of BTS and all the Twitter stuff that's going on right now. Chipotle, that's my favorite fast food. I wouldn't call it fast food, it's like medium speed, I think, moderate speed fast food. Uh, anyway, uh, Chipotle, it's 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 some kind of like a Mexican restaurant. I feel really strange calling it Mexican and then calling it a restaurant, but that's what it is. It's an American take on a Mexican fast-ish food restaurant. And uh, Chipotle, first of all, it's a short E sound, ch, it's not chi, ch, po, o, that's the sound, o, chipo, and then a very soft T going into lay. The end is a. A, a, you saw me on the street, a, right? Chipotle. 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 Let's go. I want Chipotle right now. We want Chipotle. The next word is, well, it's not actually a word. It's four words, laughing my ass off. But uh, you can also say it how it is. LMAO. And it's just the letters that you see. L-M-A-O. LMAO. So that's easy. Let's move on. L-M-A-O. L-M-A-O means uh, laughing my ass off. Something is really, really funny. The next one is procedure, okay? That one is difficult. So uh, you want to start with pr, and it's, you don't really want to open your mouth too much on that. You just want to make sure it's pretty lazy. Pr, you don't really, you know, you don't really open your mouth. Pr, C, and that's the stressed syllable. Pr, C, jer, jer. It's a j sound with er. 
It's not your, it's not or, it's er, er. Again, pretty lazy as well. Just like a uh, bird, er. Procedure, procedure, procedure. Repeat after me, procedure. Let's go. Standard procedure. The next one is hamburger, okay? Uh, first of all, it's ham. Drop your jaw, it's the same sound as man, as happy, hat, all of those. Drop your jaw. That's what I like to say. Ham, it's not hem, it's ham, and then burger. Burr, same sound er, as bird, or girl. Burr, ger. Literally two sound, two vowels that are the same. Burger, hamburger, hamburger, hamburger. Hamburger. This next one is not English. It is not, it is not English, but we do say it, and it's croissant or croissant, right? So uh, you wanna make sure it's a uh, cr, again, a very lazy sound. And then after the S, you wanna go into a rounded ah situation, croissant, and then NT. Croissant, it's the little, you know, pastry. It's fire, I love it. My croissant. Now this next one could be slightly different depending on, uh, you know, it, it's a regional thing. So um, the first part is May like the month may then you want to go into may may it's not all oh, really it's may and then in the second part you want to go into nace it's a you saw me on the street a mayonnaise okay once again different people could say this word differently so i'm just going to teach you a safe version that applies to everyone everywhere and it's the short version mayo Mayo. It's mayo, right? Mayo. Let's keep it pushing. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. This one I'm not too sure about. I'm, I'm, I'll be completely honest. I have no idea what that is or how to say that. All I know is I heard two different versions and I have no idea which one is correct. It could be bruschetta. Bruschetta. Or bruschetta. It's a bruschetta. I think the shit one is correct. It's just something that my instinct tells me. I don't feel very confident or comfortable teaching you this. Bruschetta, bruschetta, bruschetta. What I can teach you is uh, putting that flap T at the end of it. You can say bruschetta or you can say bruschetta. Da, 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 da. Same sound as water, better, letter, and all of that. When the tip of your tongue is slightly touching the roof of your mouth. Da, 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 da. Very, very, well, it's not exactly the roof of your mouth, but I don't want to go into a lot of uh, scientific details on what that's called exactly. So don't worry about it. Bruschetta or bruschetta. We don't know. I mean, I don't know. You probably know. You're smarter than me. You are way smarter than me. This next one is ghost. So it's g o s t. The main uh, trick here, I guess, is the O vowel, the diphthong, the double vowel, the sliding vowel, the gliding vowel, whatever you want to call it. Ghost. Make sure it's O, okay? That's very important. Ghost. If you ever need to use this word, just no. Ghost. O. I'm a ghost. Ghost, 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 ghost. This next one is schedule. So let's break it up. Ske. That's easy. And then jewel. Schedule. 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 You got it, it's easy. Schedule. Schedule, schedule, schedule. This next one is aesthetic. Very, very important for everything that we do and look at. But when it comes to the word itself, it's uh, there's a tricky combo there. It's an S, right? S sound, followed by a TH. And it seems and looks hard, but in reality, it's pretty similar. Those two are pretty similar. So you're gonna go into S, and then at some point, while you're doing this, stick the tip of your tongue out a little bit between your teeth. That's it, that's it. You got it. You got this, I know you do. Aesthetic, aesthetic, right? And it's gonna feel very uncomfortable, but over time you will find a way to make it more comfortable for you, more natural, and uh, that TH will be very short and very light. You know, you won't even feel it, and but you, but we will hear it. That's the most important part. Aesthetic input. This one, I know what it is, but I also don't know what it is. Uh, I know it's oil, 
right, from some plant. I just don't know what kind of plant it is what, or what it looks like. But it's jojoba. I'm pretty sure it's jojoba. Jojoba. <laughs> jojoba. This specific sound in English is very light. It's a very soft exhale. <sighs> jojoba. Just make sure that O after the second J is there. Jojoba. You got it. It's just a Swiss suicide clinic with a hint of jojoba. This next word is not hard at all, but it is hard. <laughs> so again, this very light sound, then you go into a rounded ah, hard, hard, hard. Something that you might experience when you hit that R, the tip of your tongue kind of curls back a little bit, hard, hard. That's normal, that's totally fine. If that happens to you, that's great. If it doesn't, that's great, as long as it doesn't touch anything. Hard. Hard. Not hard at all. Hard. This next one is beach. Not to be confused with the female dog, which is a completely different sound. So when it comes to beach, it's a very tight sound. It's, uh, people call it the long E or the long I sound. Uh, the length is not the issue here, it's how you actually make it, and you want to press your tongue down with all your force, well not all of it, but you want to press it down really hard in your mouth to make it really flat, right? And uh, it's a very tight sound, there's no space in your mouth, it's just kind of like that beach. And it sounds and feels very differently from bitch, beach, bitch, very different, so do not get confused. Beach. Beach. Beach ball. And the last one for the day is drawer. Drawer. This one is a very interesting and very weird one. Um, yeah, I understand why it's confusing. So uh, first of all, it's a DR combination, which gives us a little J, dr. Then you go into O, draw, and then you go into er, drawer, drawer. It's literally drawer. Wow, it's drawer. D-R-O-R. It's just kind of like it's D-R-O-R. Drawer. <laughs> it's weird, but that's just how it is. Open the drawer. What's in the drawer? Drawer. Bottom drawer. All right, so V and W. They look kind of similar, I get it. However, they are two completely different sounds. Like, completely different. Completely. Let's start with the V, okay? So what you want to do, you want to make sure your upper teeth are touching your lower lip, just like this. And then go ahead and give us some vibrations, okay? Give us some air, some vocal vibrations, and this is what you're going to get. Beautiful. That's your sound. Let's practice. Repeat after me. Variety. Variety. Version. Version. Make sure it's not... Anything else? V -v 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 version. What's your version? Village. In the village. Victory. Victory! Vehicle. Vehicle. Visible. Visible. Virtual. Keep that in mind. Virtual room. Visitor. Unauthorized visitor. Vitamin. Vitamin D. <laughs> Vibrant. It's so vibrant. Great job. Now the W is completely different. To make the previous sound, what you had to do, you had to make some sort of contact, right? Upper teeth, lower lip, contact. That's great. Well, the W doesn't need any contact. What we do, we round our lips, whoa, 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 to make sure nothing touches. Your lips don't touch, your teeth don't touch anything, your tongue does not touch anything at all. It's just whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so keep that in mind. No contact at all. Let's practice. Repeat after me. Worldwide. Worldwide. Wonderful. 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 Warehouse. The warehouse. Withdrawn. Withdrawn. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever, whatever. Waterfall. Waterfall. Work. 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 Watermark. A watermark. Watermark. No watermark. Willpower. That takes a lot of willpower. Willpower. <laughs> we got the willpower. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. 
Can you wait? Word. 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 Almost word for word. Great job. So how do you know, how do you know what is the difference between these two words? One and a couple, right? Man and men. Well, the difference is in how low your jaw goes, okay? The word man, one, this sound has a very specific symbol. It looks like an A and an E blended together, and that's the sound we want to work on today. So what you wanna do is drop your jaw as low as you can, okay? It doesn't have to be crazy, but it needs to have a significant amount of you know, movement to it. So uh, what you wanna think about is, you know, if, if it helps you, okay? The sound that I'm trying to go for here is a combination between ah and eh, okay? So take an eh sound and drop your jaw. Eh, 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 That's it, that is the sound. I know you did it. I know you did it, so let's put it to practice right now. Bad example. Drop that jaw very low. It's not bed. Bed is what you sleep on. This is bad. Bad. Bad example. Because if you say bed example, that's not correct. It's bad example. One more time for good measure. Bad example. Moving on, national anthem, national anthem. It's not national, what is national? I don't know what that is, nobody knows what that is. It's national, national anthem. Next, accurate answer, accurate answer. It's not accurate answer, it's not, it's not that. It's accurate answer. Bad habit. Bad habit. It's not bad habit. I don't know what that is. It's bad habit. Practical plan. Practical plan. Don't worry if the same sound sounds a little differently because it will be modified slightly by the consonants around it, okay? Just all you need to do is drop that jaw and it'll take care of it. Practical plan. Last chance. It's not last, last chance, it's last chance. Handsome actor. Handsome actor. It's not handsome actor. Don't be shy. Handsome actor. Mm hmm. And the last one angry man. Angry man. Again, it's not angry men, a angry men. It's angry man. One, just one, man. This sound is how you can tell the number of young guys apart. Either it's man or men. It's not even the length. It's literally just your jaw. Man men, man, men, man, men. Very important. The difference is slight and subtle, but everyone can hear it. And it's very obvious when it's being spoken. I really hope you're enjoying this lesson and you're repeating everything after me every word, every expression, every sound out loud. 
We're gonna continue shortly, but I do want to say that this pronunciation course is definitely one of my favorites because pronunciation is a very important thing to work on. It helps you feel more confident, feel better about yourself and your English. And with that feeling, you kind of just want to speak more. And that only leads to greatness. If you're somewhere in the middle, you get a little more comfortable, you want to speak more and that's how you get to the next level. And if you are already at that level, you definitely get rid of all the obstacles that you may face on your way to being completely, completely comfortable with the language. And this lesson that you're watching right now is just a small part of this big course that I have where I go into every single sound, mouth placements, tongue placements, and everything that you need to know. And you also have an opportunity to take this course as a challenge, which means you actually work on everything you want to work on. You get better, you complete tasks, get points and get prizes. 21 packed lectures, three live streams and tasks after each lecture. I've also put together a little guide for you guys uh, for every single sound with all the graphics and uh, some audios to make it a little easier for you to practice on your own. If you would like to sign up right now, you can do so by following the link in the description. And I've uh, attached a little uh, discount code for you just for the viewers of this channel of, the, of this video. So you can do it at a you know, smaller price. I hope to see you there and let's continue. Now let's get some practice going and then you'll be on your way to do it on your own. So let's go. Repeat after me. Let's make it slow and please drop that jaw low. Okay. This is your last chance to give me an accurate answer. Sam sat at the back of the math class. When you get too shy and you don't drop your jaw, it sounds bad. Sam sat at the back of the math class. No, that's not what we're going for. One more time. Sam sat at the back of the math class. Danny had a salad and a sandwich in the cafeteria. Cafeteria. Mm-hmm. Make sure you get that. Danny had a salad and a sandwich in the cafeteria. Nancy had a bad attitude in her Spanish class. Kathy would rather study acting at the National Academy. Let's slow it down. Kathy would rather study acting at the National Academy. Great job. It's very, it's, a, it's an easy fix, but the hardest part is developing that habit. Do habit, do making the habit a part of your routine without even thinking about it. So the best thing you can do right now is be, first of all, be mindful of it and be aware that it exists, which we checked off the list. Great. Now you have to practice. It's muscle memory. You just have to practice. And if your jaw is a little sore right now, you know, it's, if it's a little tired, it's good. You did everything right. What's gonna happen later on when you get more comfortable with the sound in this particular habit of yours, uh, you will understand how to make the same sound without going too crazy with your jaw. Right now we're going 200%, remember? 200%. Then you will naturally develop those instincts that will help you figure out how to, you know, bring it back down to 100%, which is where we wanna be. Okay, so if it's a little sore, if you're a little tired, great job. Okay, go off on your own and practice and I will see you in the next practice segment of this 
lesson. You know, the jaw is very tired. I understand, but this is the last stretch, okay? Repeat after me. Last day of January was a disaster. Focus on last and focus on disaster. That's about it. Last day of January was a disaster. Practice is never bad. Practice is never bad. My dad caught a bat. Focus on dad and focus on bat, okay? My dad caught a bat. Now slow, okay? Many men let their women pack their bags before a vacation. Many men let their women pack their bags before vacation. Focus on pack and focus on bags. You're right. And now let's compare. Listen and repeat. Please repeat after me so that you can uh, hear but also feel the difference. Man, men, sat, set, Bad, bed, lad, led, flash, flesh, ladder, letter, and, end. The last one is not much of a difference, but still, okay? So go ahead, go back if you have to. Practice makes perfect. Let's do it, let's get it done. You can do it. All right, first of all, what you have to understand is if your verb ends in t or d, I'm not saying t or d because I'm not talking about letters, I'm talking about sounds. T or d, the ed ending is gonna be id. For example, want, wanted. Wanted. Very simple. Visit, visited or visited. He visited. Wanted, visited, whatever. Start, started. Started. Need, needed. We needed money. Seat, seated. Be seated. End, ended. Ended up here. So just two sounds, t, t and d, it turns into id, okay? That's number one. Rule number two is, if your verb ends in an unvoiced sound like a p, S sh ch k. That was not beatboxing, that was actual sound, right? Then, your ED ending is gonna be just T. The word hope ends with letter E, but we're not talking about letters, we're talking about sounds. Hello, I told you that already. I'm just kidding, I'm sorry, I'm a little extra today. But anyway, hope, last sound is P. So, in the past, it's gonna be hoped with T, hoped, okay? I hoped. <laughs> Laugh is gonna be laughed. She laughed. Facts is gonna be faxed. Does anybody have a fax anymore? You faxed it. Wash is gonna be washed. Washed and waxed. Watch is gonna be watched. I watched. And like is gonna be liked. You said liked. Keep in mind that we are talking about the sounds, not the letters, the sounds. That's very important. And of course, rule number three. Rule number three is, if your verb ends in any other voiced sound, or Y, for example, then your ED ending is gonna turn into D. Play, played, played, okay? I played, I played. Allow, allowed. Allowed. Beg, begged. Begged. That is very clear. Hopefully you understand that. And of course, there are exceptions. If this is an adjective that we're dealing with, the ed ending is gonna be id. Blessed. Blessed be. Wicked. Wicked. Crooked. Crooked. Naked. Naked. Remember, if it's an adjective, it's gonna be id. So you would say a blessed girl or a blessed day, right? But if it's a verb, it's gonna be regular. He blessed me. Blessed day. 
he blessed me. So keep that in mind. There are always exceptions and there's always something to watch out for. I mean, what else is new is English. And the first one is brewery. It's a very uncomfortable word. Brewery. Yeah, you, you just kind of round your lips and stay there. Brewery. 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 Uh, this is uh, where they make beer. Goddamn brewery! Word number two. Take a look at it. I would like to invite you to guess what this word sounds like. The word is choir. 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 This is a, a group of people singing together. Choir, right? Choir. So this is a weird exception right here. You know, English is not a phonetic language to begin with, but some things are still super wild, even knowing that choir. That's that's pretty crazy. I like that. Choir? This one is pretty cool. So this one is comfortable, right? But many people just say comfortable. Comfort. It's, it's like the R and the T are very close together, almost like blending in to the same letter, sort of. Uh, comfortable. Comfortable. I'm not comfortable. Comfortable. I'm trying so hard to say it slowly, but I just can't. Comfort. Comfortable, 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 comfortable. They literally just blend in. So instead of maybe trying to uh, understand it, why don't you just, uh, you know, take it as is and say it how people say it, which is comfortable. And comfortable. Great job. This next word I hardly ever use and it's uh, mischievous, mischievous. It's an adjective that means, you know, basically Doing something that will get you in trouble, basically. That's what it, you know, behaving in the way that will cause trouble. Mischievous. There's nothing really here to discuss. It's it's pretty, you know, obvious in terms of the spelling and the pronunciation. It's, you know, I feel like it's a line. This one gets people into heated arguments. Now, which team are you? Do you think this word should be said with T? Like often, or do you think this word should be said without a T? Often, what do you think? Are you team often or team often? Well, me personally, I'm both uh, because it, it's both. You can just choose whatever you want, whatever you want. Often is correct and often is correct as well. It is just a weird, it's not a silent T, but it is a weird phonetic occurrence. Uh, uh, somebody came up with that and, and we, we just kind of run with it which is very strange you can use either one it doesn't matter it's up to you you have the freedom to choose not often, often, often girl, I, I mentioned the silent t well you know silent t's happen like internet instead of internet interview instead of interview but there's more there is much more like flap t like in the word water or daughter we also have uh the glottal stop like in the words um button or written, right? We also have the ch t, like, I don't know, train? Or sh t, like patience. With just this one letter, there's a lot of different sounds. And um, it could get confusing, it could get overwhelming, but I did all the work so that you don't have to. And uh, if you wanna learn more and if you wanna get better at pronunciation or maybe you wanna sound just like this, right? Sign up for my brand new launch of my very popular, actually, uh, course about English pronunciation and accent reduction. This is where we do the detail work, the, the technical detail work, where we figure out where to place our tongue, what to do with our mouth and lips, and what touches what. It's very detail-oriented because, uh, well, for one simple reason. If you know the details of how to make a sound, there is a very low chance of you getting it wrong. That's just how it is. So I'm gonna leave the link down below, sign up, and I hope to see you there. Now we're moving on to this fun word. The word is phenomenon. Phenomenon. This word is uh, also pretty straightforward in terms of the spelling and the phonetics of it. However, this word is a little trippy because of the rhythmic part of it, the rhythm of the word, phenomenon. It, it throws people off a little bit. So uh, yeah, just be calm, stay cool, and just read it how it's written, phenomenon. Electronic voice phenomenon. Now this next one is pretty crazy, I'm not gonna lie, this one is insane. Look at it, 
Look at it. What do you think? What do you think this is? I'm sure you have a thousand options, but none of them are quinoa. Quinoa. Bro, quinoa. It's something people eat. I, I can't really describe it any other way. Quinoa. Quinoa. The next one is sanguine. The stress, you 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 probably thought the stress was uh, closer to the end of the word, but no, it's, uh, the first, it's the first syllable stress. Sanguine. Now, sanguine means uh, basically a person who is, uh, you know, cheerful and hopeful and, and, and happy uh, even when the situation is really tough and, and, and bad. Again, a word that I hardly ever use. Uh, I've used it maybe once or twice in my life, <laughs> honestly. But yeah, a good word to know, I guess. Sanguine. Be sanguine, fill your boots. Next, scissors. Scissors. And, uh, you know, they do this. And uh, yeah, what do you have to know about this word? First of all, uh, the, there's a z sound in the middle, scissors, number one. Number two, there, it's always plural, and uh, don't run with them. <laughs> uh, scissors, scissors, that should be pretty easy for you, scissors. Scissors? This next one is also very, uh, you know, kind of obvious in terms of how it's written. You, you can pretty much, you know, guess how to say it, and it's specific. Specific. Specific, which means, you know, something, uh, th this one thing, this one thing, and it could be this only one thing. Specific. Nah, this next one, oh, they didn't do that. Okay, okay, so this next one is allegedly the word that every foreigner has a problem with. So I'm gonna teach you how to say it right now. The word is squirrel, right? So, let's uh, start. The first sound is sk, 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 okay? Then we add W. Squ, squ, like you're saying square, square, right? Squ, squ. The next sound is er, like like in the word bird, er, squir, squir, just a square. And the last sound is dark l, which is an l, but you don't touch anything with your tongue. It's it's it happens kind of in the back. Your tongue is kind of floating around, not touching anything. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Squirrel, squirrel, you can do it now. The squirrel! And the last word is temperature, temperature. The way it's spelled is a little misleading, but uh, it's not temperature, right? It's, it's temperature, temperature. So that E after P and before R, you can just get rid of it and uh, you know treat it as if it was never there. Temperature. Room temperature, check. And now, I was informed that we have a bonus round for me. Uh, you're testing me? I was sent a list of five longest words. Oh my God. So I have to say them? Oh Lord, oh my God, oh my, okay. Okay, uh, I'm assuming it's it's uh, all of that is medical. There's no other way. Okay, uh, we're testing me right now. Okay, okay, I, I get it. Let me try and say them. The first one is on the screen right now. Pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism. Pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism. It sounds like a condition. Floxina. Oh my God. Flox floxinocine helipilification. I have no idea what that is and what that means. And I don't, I have no idea if I even said it right. That's pretty crazy. Anti disestablishmentarianism. Oh, that's pretty easy. Anti disestablishmentarianism. Okay. I have no idea what that means either. Honorific ability to nematibus. Sounds like a condition too. And the last one is. Thyroparathyroid, thyroid ectomized. Some kind of uh, adjective. Thyroparathyroid ectomized. The first thing you have to know is there are two types of the TH sound. The first one is unvoiced, and the second one is voiced. To correctly understand the placement of everything and the shapes, we need to start with the voiceless or the unvoiced th sound because the placement of your tongue is going to be the same for both of them and it's easier to start with the voiceless one or the unvoiced one so the first thing you want to do is stick your tongue out not not a lot just a little bit and put the tip of your tongue between your teeth just like this you don't want to go too crazy okay you just want to give me a little bit not like this, and not 
where I can't see it at all. I want to see it, okay? Once you do this, blow out some air. Now adjust your airflow so that it's not too harsh. It's very light. Congratulations, you just accomplished the voiceless or unvoiced TH sound. Let's try it. Think. Think. Thought. Thought. Thin. Thin. Now let's practice with the sound at the end of the word. Math. Math. Bath. 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 Path. Maybe my path is a war path. Both. Both. Now let's move on to more challenging combinations. Through. Let's do this one one more time. Through. Through anything. Three. Three. So the main thing is to make sure the tip of your tongue is slightly out between your teeth. That is the single thing that you can make sure of to guarantee your success with the sound. No more tricks, no more life hacks. Just this one placement thing that you have to make sure you get correctly and that's how you know the sound is correct. No matter what other sounds are after or before it. <laughs> Pretty easy. It's just one little trick and that's it. And a whole sound is out of the way now. Now that we've accomplished this, Let's move on to the voiced one and just like I told you before the placement and your tongue and everything else is exactly the same You just want to add some vocal vibrations the 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 make sure the airflow is very light You don't want to go too crazy on this. You don't want to go zzz, zzz, And that's not the sound right? It's it, it, the th is not the sound that you want to put a lot of emphasis in to begin with you don't want to spend too much time on it and you definitely don't want to force it okay you don't want to go that's not gonna work so let's practice together once again the single trick is to make sure the tip of your tongue is out that is the only thing that's gonna guarantee your success with the sound so make sure it's always there and the first word is there. Their incomes, their marital status, their... That. That. Though. Seriously though. Them. Them. <laughs> These. These. Now let's place it in the middle of the word. Father. 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 Mother. 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 Clothing. Clothing. To go along with our children's clothing line. Other. Other. Other tasks, other opportunities. This one might trip you up just a little bit, but it's gonna take a little bit of time for you to get comfortable uh, getting your tongue in and out fast. Rather. Rather. Rather spectacularly. Soothing. 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 Leather. 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 Weather. Weather. The weather outside is weather. And now that you know the trick, a very simple trick, it's only a matter of time until it becomes your second nature. You have to practice a whole lot to form this new habit so that you don't have to think about it anymore. So think, think about it this way. It's an investment. You have to think about it a lot right now to stop thinking about it completely later. And to wrap this up, Let's practice these sounds in a sentence or in a bunch of sentences. I'm gonna read them for you nice and slow and you just have to repeat after me or pause this video and read the sentence on the screen. This is something. This is something. Let's do it one more time. This is something. This is something. A little information about this particular combination. This is something. When you start working really hard on your THs, sometimes the S and Z sounds 
could suffer a little bit because you're overthinking it and you're you know you're trying to create this new habit and it's a little awkward for you uh, instead of something if you say something or you know anything of that sort when you're confusing the sounds that is perfectly normal that is perfectly natural that's why you have to take it slow and be really aware and mindful of the sounds that you are making let's try this one more time this is something this is something great job the next one they should ask their mother they should ask their mother every time that th hits you want to make sure the tip of your tongue is out that is the most important and the only rule of the sound they should ask their mother and they need their mother and the last one my 13th birthday this one is tough let's do it slowly one more time my 13th birthday my 13th birthday celebrate his niece and nephew's 13th birthday i broke this down into well let's just call it five steps five easy steps to follow if you want to get rid of your accent let's start with step one and step one is sounds sounds means the foundational knowledge about what to do with your mouth where your tongue goes what to do with your teeth for specific sounds if we're talking about the w round your lips no contact w w water we were and all of that if we're talking about the regular t the t that you can find at the beginning of the word we know that the tip of our tongue goes on that space right behind your front upper teeth not on them but behind so it's not the it's T, 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 t. Knowing this is crucial and you cannot go on, you cannot move on to any other step if you don't have that. You need to have a system in place, something that will never let you down. You might not hear everything just yet, you might not be able to recognize if it's wrong or if it's right, but if you know that there's only one place your tongue can go for this specific sound, you can't get it wrong. It's impossible. If you know that for the TH, we need to stick the tip of our tongue out and put it between our teeth and blow out air. There's no other way to do it. There's no way to mess it up. It gives you this foundational layer of confidence. If I get it right here, I'm good. There's no way I can get it wrong. This is very important. And uh, people who skip this step don't really achieve what we're trying to achieve. So pay attention to this and make sure you never neglect this one. And where can I find this information, you may ask? Well. I'm glad you're here, you've come to the right place. Because it took me years to collect all this information and uh, put it all in one place, make it convenient, make it easy to understand, make it comfortable, and motivate you to practice and do whatever it takes to learn all of these basics. If you're ready to start your brand new English life with no traceable accent, or maybe just significantly better pronunciation, it doesn't have to be completely gone. You just want to feel good. You just want to feel comfortable. You just want to enjoy hearing yourself speak English and you want others to enjoy it too and understand you from the first sentence. Well, look no further. My revolutionary pronunciation course is here. I'm going to put the link down below, join our next launch. And I'm very excited to work with you in the way that no one was able to work with me when I was concerned with all this. Once we've secured step one, it's time to move on to step two. Step two is very important, but not as important as step one. You can't really do step two without step one. So step two is ear training. Just make sure you expose yourself to as much English as possible on a daily basis. What that does is over time, you just get used to hearing it a lot. And once you get past that awkward stage of, oh no, this is English, I need to pay attention and focus, you will be able to actually recognize certain sounds, how they are made, and most importantly, you will be able to recognize what you might be doing wrong when you practice. Or even more important than that, you will be able to recognize what you're doing right. Don't forget to uh, you know, reward yourself. So it's all your favorite TV, movies, podcasts, audiobooks, YouTube videos, TED Talks, whatever you like. Uh, people always ask me what to watch, what to do, what to look for, just whatever you like. Let's pretend like we're not learning any languages. We all speak the same language and, you know, a concept of different languages does not exist. What would you watch? What would you listen to? That's what you do. 
make sure it's enjoyable make sure you're learning something new aside from just english just make sure you're taking care of your life and your interests and hobbies this step very pleasant you, you can just chill relax watch netflix and uh, you're actually learning how crazy is that once we get step two going and you know it's just it turns into a gift that keeps on giving we can move on to steps three and uh, let's start with step three a step three a is essentially practice uh we call that self-assessment so um make sure you actually practice everything that you hear and everything that you know in terms of your mouth shapes and make sure you can have some sort of system in place of where you can record yourself and listen back to it all the stuff that you hear in your favorite tv shows movies or podcasts or everything that you're training your ear to pick up on well it comes into play here listen to yourself forget that it's you pretend like you know you're just listening to a native speaker talk about something and just really try to be as objective as you can i know it's hard but you can do it just make sure you have a you know some sort of consistent almost like a ritual in terms of self-assessment every day at the same time you record yourself saying something on video or on your voice memos you know what i mean that will help you identify your issues that can be addressed by going back to step one uh, this sound sounded weird. Let me go back and figure out what I'm doing wrong. See, everything everything just works together. Step 3B is form new habits. To form new habits, we need consistency. You can't go anywhere without consistency. Always remind yourself of these things that you learned during step one and things, conclusions that you made for yourself during step two and uh, bring it over here. Be aware of all the things that you need to do and do them on a regular basis our goal is to change some habits it's very natural for every english learner to uh you know want to bring some stuff over from their native language into english because it's well first of all you don't know any different um, number two it's comfortable it's convenient and number three you don't even think about it you kind of just do it on kind of like a, on an instinct type of level and uh, our job here is just to form new habits you know, uh, healthier speaking habits. And that's what you're doing here. And you can't really do it without being consistent with it. You already know. It, it's just like starting, you know, working out or drinking water or eating healthy or whatever the case may be. It's a new habit that needs love and attention. And once you manage to get through this step and all of these habits are starting to form, well, that's when you can have fun. Be free, relax. All of these things that you once thought really hard about, they just become your second nature. You don't even have to think about it. Eventually you stop thinking about what shape your mouth is in and where your tongue goes. You don't need to do it anymore because it's a new habit. Being an English learner is really tough because nobody talks about it, but when you're an English learner, kind of like in the middle of your journey, it's very difficult because just to say something, you need to think about a million different things. Grammar, you know, the words that you use, pronunciation, actually whatever idea you're trying to communicate, it's a lot, but there is hope. One day you'll just stop thinking about one thing and the next thing you know, the next thing is gone. And next thing you know, you wake up and the only thing you have to think about is actually what you're trying to say. Everything else is just a part of you now. That's why consistency is very important because you can't really achieve that without, you know, making it a part of your life. You make it a part of your life, you force it to be a part of your life, and then it becomes a part of you. That's how it works, and that's our goal, and that's what we all strive to do. So just relax and enjoy. You know, English is not a language that is spoken from a very tense, uncomfortable place. I know it's going to be like that at first but then once you you know get some consistency going you'll be able to relax you'll gain more confidence and uh pronunciation is great a lot of people teachers will tell you that pronunciation or accent is not important and it's not worth it to spend time on it but i strong strongly disagree because what it comes down to is confidence. If you really enjoy hearing yourself talk, you'll talk more, which means more practice, which means more opportunity to try new things in terms of grammar and vocabulary. And that's the goal. And then your English is at crazy levels. So yeah, this entire process, this entire thing is about these things. Mindfulness. When you learn the sounds and what to do with your mouth, uh, you need to be mindful of that. All the different changes, some things are gonna be uncomfortable, but you need to be mindful of them. Inspiration is 
when you listen to other people talk native speakers and you want to be just like them or you want to be very close to them you train your ear and you just pick up on certain habits and tendencies that native speakers have i'm talking about you know stresses and tones and all of that awareness is the next one is uh you know when you can assess yourself and be aware of certain things that you need to work on right now and you work on them consistency is when you know it all comes down to that when you apply all the things that you learn and do it regularly and then you can achieve freedom when you don't have to think about any of this at all it will happen you just need to go through the steps and this can be achieved but yeah this is my little plan that i followed personally and it got me some incredible results i would say now it's your turn to do it and i know you can because if i could you can too all right let's talk about it this is the most mispronounced state in the u.s illinois right illinois we know that illinois has a sound silent s sound so it should be pronounced illinois not illinois yeah we knew that that's great congratulations to us illinois colorado colorado right while you may have been saying colorado locals will tell you that it's better to say colorado are you for real colorado with the second syllable rhyming with bad i had no idea i am so sorry i don't know arkansas right is that how it is not arkansas arkansas should be referred to as arkansas instead of arkansas we knew that we're not stupid all right it lives in arkansas okay okay i got this one so it's either missouri or missouri both are fine i only know that from college because uh, someone i went to school with was from there this midwestern state actually has two pronunciations that are acceptable missouri and missouri we did it guys we did it Missouri North Division. Florida? What's so special about Florida? Residents of the Sunshine State would argue that Florida should be pronounced with a Southern accent. Ah, uh, makes sense. They tend to draw out the word as Florida. Florida, I've heard people say that for sure. Florida, rather than focus on the hard R in the sound Florida. Interesting, Florida. I've definitely heard people say that. Florida. Oregon, what's wrong with Oregon? We bet you've fallen for Oregon's tricky pronunciation. I didn't know it was even tricky to begin with. Originally, the state in the Pacific Northwest was most likely pronounced as Oregon. Oregon? That's crazy. However, over time, that changed to Oregon. Oregon, Oregon, okay? And today's most common pronunciation is Oregon. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, that's cool. It's Oregon. Oregon. Nevada. What's tricky about Nevada? Uh, it's actually pronounced Nevada, not Nevada. Oh, Nevada. I've heard people say it like that. Wow, that's crazy. Nevada, like bad. Drop that jaw. Carson City, Nevada. I think some honorable mentions that we definitely should talk about that they didn't mention in the article. They're not as tricky as some of these, but still, you know, I think they're still worth mentioning. It's uh, Kentucky. Keen City, Kentucky. Texas. Where? Texas. Michigan, with a little sh. Michigan. 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 Connecticut. Connecticut, that's that's a good one, Connecticut. From Connecticut. California, with a a, a, California. California, right? Let's move on to cities. I'm scared. 10 commonly mispronounced US city names to navigate your way around. Oh my God, number one is already crazy. I hate this word. Worcester. That's common popular pronunciations. Worcester. Worcester. I don't like any of them. Prevailing local pronunciation. Worcester? Are you serious right now? Worcester. And Worcester? Number two, uh, Louisville. We know that one. We know it's French. So when you see Louis, it's actually not Louis. It's actually Louis. Louisville, like Louis Vuitton, right? Louisville. My uh, wife and children are in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, that's Spokane, right? Common popular pronunciation, Spokane. Spokane. Prevailing local pronunciation, Spokane. Spokane? Spokane. Okay. Being in Spokane, Washington. Uh, New Orleans, I think. Common popular pronunciations, New Orleans. New Orleans. Prevailing local pronunciation, New Orleans. Okay, that's, that's how I said it. New Orleans. Tucson, 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 Tucson. Common popular pronunciation, prevailing local version, Tucson. Tucson, right? Yo, number six, uh, Des Moines. Common popular pronunciation, 
Des Moines. Oh, it's French. Duh. So it's uh, Des Moines, right? Des Moines, Des Moines. That's what I said. Prevailing local pronunciation, Des Moines. I mean, look, look, we, we kind of got it. Ah, yes. The mighty, mighty lions of Des Moines. Number seven. What the hell is that? Raleigh? Common popular pronunciation. Rally. Rally? Like the one in North Carolina? Uh, number eight. Mobile, Alabama. Common popular pronunciation, mobile. Prevailing local pronunciation, mobile. Mobile, Alabama. That's crazy. Kissing me? That's kissing me, right? Common popular pronunciation, kissing me. Oh, that's what I said. Oh, I'm in trouble. Prevailing local pronunciation, Kissimmee? That's the stress? Those are coordinates to Kissimmee, Florida. Oh, 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 okay, number 10. I got number 10. I know, I know. It's Poughkeepsie, right? Poughkeepsie? I've heard that somewhere. I feel like someone has said it to me before or mentioned it some, for some reason. Poughkeepsie, I just remember hearing that. Common popular pronunciation is Poughkeepsie. That sounds weird as hell. Prevailing local pronunciation, Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie, for example. <laughs> Very interesting to see how different, uh, you know, the names of places came from other languages, obviously, because of the history and all of that. We're not gonna get into that too much, but I have a challenge for you now. I'm gonna show you names of some cities or towns on the screen, and you have to guess how to say it, and then I'll tell you what it is, okay? The first one is on the screen right now. So it's Boise. I've heard some people say with an S, Boise. I've heard some people say with a Z, Boise. So I guess it's up to you, Boise, Idaho. And Barbara, who lives in Boise, Idaho. The next one. Cam, well, okay, I guess we gotta do it right. Camarillo, California. Camarillo, California. It's not English, remember. And the last one. La Jolla, California. Also not English. Pretty cool, huh? How'd you like to spend the weekend in La Jolla with me, Sal? I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know if you learned a lot from it or if it was super useful, but at least we had fun and learned something, right? Let me know if you like this format. You know, me just going on random websites and checking out the articles and trying to see if we can learn something from it. If you like it, I'll try to make more. You can also send me suggestions in the comments. I would love to see that. And uh, of course, subscribe if you haven't. I will see you in the next one. Peace.